So if you've seen my most recent video, I explain how the saxophone works. And the saxophone requires a pretty big box. Uh, I couldn't just throw this away, of course, I had to put it to use. And so what I did was I turned it into a camera obscura. Let me show you how it works. So basically making a camera obscura is pretty simple. Obviously I get the box here and stab a little hole in it. I'm using this tiny little Phillips head screwdriver. Just make sure the hole's not too big. Um, for this size box, the size of the screwdriver there should be pretty good. And that's pretty much about it. So typically camera obscuras are whole rooms, uh, big enough for someone to stand in, but considering I don't really have access to something like that, I just use this box and to simulate me in it, I'm going to be using my Canon camera. So I gave it a quick test the night that I built it by putting my laptop screen on the outside uh, with my channel page on it. And the very first picture that I got actually showed me some very promising results, which was here. I had another go at it, um, trying to eliminate more light, kind of sleeping through the cracks. But I was very happy with the results that I got and decided to put it to more use. So right now I'm just trying to uh, photograph just outside uh, my window there, using this. Uh, I'm going to see what it looks like on the camera there. Um, I'm doing it while it's daylight, obviously, because it's brighter if I try when it's darker. For instance, I've tried uh, in this room with, well, when it's dark outside, when it's night time. Um, just trying to photograph this, this skills container here. Couldn't see a thing, so um, that's why you can see, like, my laptop screen. And it obviously, it being bright outside, hopefully I'll be able to get something. But I keep having the issue of light coming in through the top, so what I'm going to do is turn off my room light. And hopefully I won't have much of an issue there. And hopefully we'll get something um, from outside. It's just finished. Put the cameras up a bit high, but yes, there is definitely something. And of course, I'm getting the issue of the that coming through there. But if you look there, all that pattern kind of stuff there, that's um, that's the leaves outside, just outside my window. Cool, awesome. Well, I'll have another crack at that. Another few goes. I'll see what I can get from there. I had the idea of chucking a uh, towel over when I hold it down as well. That could block some of the light coming through the top. Alright. Oh, that one's much better. Much better. See that there? You can see the leaves and sticks and branches, things like that. Yeah, that's with the towel over. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to keep, keep that up. So that image there, that one is... So there was the previous one there, and then that one there. Slightly darker, but... But uh, like more more clear. This one looks like it got uh, shaken around a bit, uh, so it's a bit blurrier. That one's more um, clear. Yeah, awesome.
That just worked extraordinarily well. Look at that. That's of those trees and the rocks. Wow, I'm gonna do that again. I might end up looking a bit transparent with this shot, but we'll see what happens. That totally worked. I really like. You can see that's my shirt, and there's me. <laughs> that's awesome how that works. Actually, how does it work? So it's actually quite simple how the camera obscura works. Basically, any object that has light bouncing off of it uh, reflects the light in all directions but the pinhole in the camera obscura allows the light to enter in just one spot. We can call this light ordered, meaning that it isn't scattered. So the few light rays that enter in the box through the tiny pinhole, uh, when they hit the back of the box, they can display an image of what's outside. And as you may have noticed, the image has been flipped uh, upside down and reversed left to right. The reason why it's like this is because any object that has light entering from the top goes through the pinhole and then straight down to be uh, reflected on the bottom of the box. And so same with the bottom, except it goes upwards and is reflected on the up upper part of the box. And same with left and right, so right goes left and left goes right. That's why it's flipped and reversed. Now, the camera obscura is not really used as much these days, but uses that it had back in the day were things like viewing solar eclipses, um, considering looking directly at the sun can damage your eyes, so they could safely view it inside a dark room uh, projected on a wall, and other things like for artists, uh, they can point the camera obscura at like uh, cliff faces, that kind of thing, and they can trace and get some very accurate drawings and paintings from it. And of course, you may have noticed that the camera obscura is very similar to a pinhole camera. And basically, from the camera obscura, a pinhole camera was invented. People uh, put light-sensitive uh, materials on the inside, and they could then essentially capture that without like artists tracing it. And that is actually a plan of mine. I do want to, say, get a shoebox and make a pinhole camera. Rather than it being this big, I can have it handheld and I can uh, easily move it around a bit more. Well, there we have it. This is my camera obscura. I certainly hope you uh, understood all the explanations and enjoyed the video. Uh, these things are pretty easy to make yourself, so I highly recommend it. But uh, yeah, if you do think I've earned it, then please consider subscribing. But until then, I'll see you next time.